Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our first workshop on February. Okay, so before I start, let me introduce uh, a bit about my story. Okay, so my story consists of a multidisciplinary team. Uh, we have different uh, types of uh, professionals uh, working together to provide services like <clears throat> academic delays for children that have sensory delays, developmental delays, behavioral and emotional delays as well as physical delays. Okay, uh, the team consists of uh, academic support, which is a uh, special needs educator or teacher. Uh, we have behavior therapists, we have clinical psychologists, we have a counselor, we have occupational therapists, reading therapists, as well as visual therapists. Okay. So you can WhatsApp us, or you can contact us through WhatsApp, uh, email, uh, the, our operation hours is Monday to Friday, eight to five. Saturdays and Sundays are uh, 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 via prior appointment only, and we are closed during the public holidays. Uh, you can check us out on our Facebook for our upcoming uh, events. Uh, every month we have uh, workshops and short courses available. Uh, you can check us out on our website, uh, Instagram, as well as LinkedIn. Okay, so today, um, our topic today is uh, about teaching strategies for children with special needs. We have our in-house uh, special needs teacher, uh, teacher treating to share with us uh, about uh, strategies to help children. Okay. Um, if you have any, uh, if those who join us today or anyone else have any suggestions uh, or questions about a uh, topic about special needs, feel free to PM us. You can, or you can send us a message. Uh, we have this topic based on the request of parents as well as other uh, professional like teachers. Okay, uh, as we know, uh, we are at the post pandemic uh, where children are slowly getting back to school and then some are still doing um, uh, hybrid classes. So part of it will be online, part of it will be physical class. Okay, so these are the things that we found out uh, a lot of children uh, as of today are finding it a bit difficult uh, to follow with the class because of. Um, from online back to physical, or they do hybrid, half physical, half online. Okay, even teachers are having some difficulties when uh, we talk about uh, teaching children with special needs. So uh, today we would like to share a bit about the strategies, how we do it here, and how we help teachers and parents as well as students uh, in terms of teaching for children with special needs. Uh, teacher treating, are you there? Uh, you're mute. Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, let me share my screen. So while we're talking uh, here, while teacher treating is presenting, if any of you have any questions, feel free to put it in the comment box. Okay, so we'll bring it up and we'll discuss. So any of you have any questions or uh, regarding teaching strategies or suggestions to teach or at home, uh, feel free to let us know. Okay. Okay, uh, so shall, shall we start? Yes, yes, please. Yeah, uh, so uh, good afternoon, everyone. So today, uh, our topic today is uh, teaching strategies that I would like to share with all of you. Uh, some teaching strategies that we use uh, in class. And also we can actually uh, make use of these strategies uh, to uh, do it together with our children at home as well. So uh, first of all, I would like to uh, share about uh, understanding uh, of our child. Uh, to, for the first thing that we need to know is to build on the strengths of our child. So uh, uh, for this one, every child actually has their own learning style. So uh, I will be sharing about a different learning style with different examples, how are we going to, how are we going to uh, do it in the class uh, with some examples. And uh, so uh, parents and also uh, uh, feel free to actually uh, use this uh, and also try to um, use this at home as well. 
So um, we first of all, uh, children learn best when they are learning on uh, their strength. So things that are good at it, they will learn uh, faster. So first of all, uh, it's very important for us to actually identify how our child learns best. So first of all, the first one, which is visual, auditory, and also kinesthetic. So actually, um, I'll be presenting you uh, different examples. Actually, in school, in, in class, uh, what we will conduct is actually we will work on all aspects. So uh, we will try to focus on presenting the material in a variety of ways in terms of visual, auditory, kinesthetic. At the end of the day, our children is actually learning uh, three of them in all aspects. It's just that when, uh, for example, this uh, ch children, uh, child A, he is very good in visual. So uh, we will start off with visual and uh, make him, you know, uh, uh, gain his interest in the in the. Uh, topic and slowly we will include auditory and also kinesthetic uh, uh, way of learning for them to uh, learn. All right, so uh, the next one I will be uh, further elaborating on uh, visual. So for visual learner, uh, they actually learn best by seeing or reading. So they will do well when materials is presented and tested visually rather than verbally. So for uh, visual learners, uh, you can do some written notes, uh, directions, diagrams, charts, maps, and pictures for them to actually uh, learn the topic that you would like them to uh, you would like to deliver. So they may love to draw, read, or write, and they may often uh, be good at spelling as well. Uh, they actually, for example, spelling. Uh, they can actually uh, basically remember the spelling of the words after they seize the words. So um, how are we going to enhance them for visual learner? How are we going to en enhance them to, you know, learn in this, uh, uh, learn through visual? So these are the examples. For example, uh, you can use books, videos, computers, visual aids, and flashcards. So, for example, uh, I have a few cards, if you can see it. I have a few cards here. All these are mathematics questions. So, actually, we can, uh, they, they, learn, uh, they learn very well by seeing all these uh, flashcards, which uh, you can actually flash it and ask them to, you know, solve the problem tell you the answer to make it more interesting so that they can uh, catch the concept faster. For example, the next one, uh, color-coded or highlighted notes. Okay, some of, the, um, some of our children, they uh, are very sensitive with color. Uh, I have, uh, for example, I have one of my uh, students, he likes color. So uh, this is how he actually uh, actually do it uh, in learning. He actually use, uh, he has a few color pen. So for example, red, green, blue, uh, and black. So what he does is, okay, blue and black is actually uh, for him to uh, write in the answers, write in his notes. So for green, he will actually use it as a uh, correction. When he does correction, he actually, use, uh, he actually uses green color to make sure, okay, uh, it's uh, for, for correction, uh, this, is, this will be green color. So for red, it's uh, something that they would like to so, uh, put in some remarks, they will write in, they will use their uh, red color pen. So um, this is what they share about um, actually, for them, it's, it's, it's quite dull if uh, the whole page of exercise or the whole page of notes, they um, actually uh, have it in one color. It's uh, boring for them. 
So uh, actually they add in colors and also sometimes if they are, uh, they are very good in drawing, they can actually uh, draw some, uh, some pictures associates with the notes, with the points, uh, which that, uh, that can help them to uh, learn faster or memorize uh, some of the points. So for example, um, mind map, mind mapping is also a very good example for them to learn as well. So the next one will be diagram or making lists. It's also, um, it's also good for visual learner. And okay, for this one, the next one using drawings and illustrations. So for this one, um, um, I, for this point, I would like to share about our one of my experience uh, with uh, one of my students. So um, this student of mine, he actually likes drawing very much. So we actually associate, uh, and uh, at the same time, drawings and uh, he likes drawings and also language. At the same time, he doesn't like uh, mathematics. So what we, does, uh, what we do is, we actually uh, use drawing um, because he likes to read, he likes story. We actually associate story uh, together with uh, mathematics questions. So for example, uh, in the class, we, we actually uh, use his drawing and put in some equations like uh, addition. Our topics will be uh, two plus one. Okay, addition two plus one, three plus two, and all these. Actually, um, these students of mine, I, I was quite reluctant to, you know, uh, solve uh, mathematics problems. So, uh, what we what we do is, uh, in his drawing, we actually include all this, and uh, to make it more fun, they have uh, he has to uh, go through uh, the drawing. And also we make it like a scavenger hunt. So we actually uh, put in story, drawings, and uh, the mathematics questions. So uh, for example, uh, I have, a, I have a, an example here with the three little pigs. So the three little pigs uh, has a friend. So three little pigs plus one friend will be three plus one will be four. So four of them uh, is going to, so we will uh, expand the storyline, okay? Expand the storyline and also do the drawing. And at the same time, we included the mathematics in the learning as well. So uh, he actually, uh, this students of mine uh, actually it was able to accept uh, this kind of learning and he was not uh, uh, you know before this when we uh, gave him the uh, mathematics questions he will uh, he will tell us all, all he will tell us no I don't like mathematics when we try this uh, method to associate a few things together uh, his uh, he is being more receptive on it so uh, which uh, for parents who has uh, who has uh, who face this kind of challenges at home teaching your uh, kids okay feel free to use this associates okay and uh, the next one will be uh, take detailed notes in class so um, for visual learner they do uh, they do a lot of writing they like to you know they like to read uh, they like to uh, uh, right, so we can actually make use of their strength to actually uh, let them learn things that they uh, let them receive some new new things or new topics. So this is for new learners, uh, sorry, visual learners. So the next one will be auditory learners. So uh, what is what do you mean by auditory? By auditory is by listening. So they learn best by listening. So in the classroom, they usually uh, learn through discussion, spoken direction, learns through verbally. So for this kind of, uh, for this type of uh, ch uh, children who has this type of uh, learning style, 
they actually likes a lot of uh, music and they are very good in languages or they like to be on stage as well um i have i have a student he likes to he's a very outspoken boy and he actually likes to be on stage so what we do is uh, we actually um, guide him to actually uh, go on stage and to tell everyone uh, the outcome or the things, the knowledge that did, uh, he learned uh, daily. So for that day, for example, the topic will be lights. So what he learned about lights uh, he, because he likes to be on stage, we actually make him to stand in front of the classroom to actually tell everybody, um, what did you learn from this topic? So he will start, okay, um, uh, today I learned about lights and all that. So it is a very um, important, important and also very vital uh, way for him to actually you know, remind him on uh, to actually revise on what he has been uh, he has been taught in the class. So for uh, for auditory learners, these are the examples that we can we can do. We can uh, get them to read the notes out loud. Okay, or the study materials. For example, if they are not uh, they are not very patient in reading. Okay, they're not very patient in reading. They need, uh, sometimes they need guidance. Okay, I have this boy, which uh, he knows how to read. It's just that he will, he tends to rush everything when he reads. So what we do is to actually uh, invite him and stand in front of the class and actually read it out loud. So when he is trying to, because, uh, um, we actually give him a responsible, uh, res a kind of task. So his task will be, uh, he has to stand outside the class, uh, stand uh, on stage and to let everyone knows to, uh, to teach, sort of like teach, be the, uh, be the teacher of the day, to teach everyone uh, the comprehension that we are going to have. We are going to learn that day. So when he is doing it on stage, he tends to be very careful in, you know, going through uh, words by words. So the, te the tendency, the frequency of him rushing to finish the comprehension is actually reduced a lot. So that's, that is how we make use of their strength and what they like, their interests to actually uh, get them to learn more. In a way, um, he is actually practicing uh, to read and he is actually trying to regulate himself, to control himself, not to rush everything. This is, uh, to rush everything is his uh, weakness, but we actually used her, uh, his interest, his uh, strength to actually support each other to help him to go through this process. So uh, for auditory uh, learners, we can actually uh, also use uh, word associations and also uh, uh, verbal repetition to actually help them to memorize, to go through the, the um, objects or the new vocab that they are learning. So the next one will be actually associates learning with songs. So for um, students who li likes uh, to sing, who likes songs, we can actually uh, associate it with songs. For example, uh, learning farm animals from the farm song. Uh, we can actually learn counting from, uh, there are a lot of counting songs, which you can actually uh, get it from YouTube. So uh, like for, uh, in my class, I actually do some uh, counting Okay, uh, with my students, uh, with also some uh, physical activities such as throw, catch and throw balls. So they actually need to do the counting from 1 to 20 slowly because they, um, okay, uh, 
uh, a few of my students, they have this uh, hyperactive uh, symptoms. So they tend to uh, rush things off. So they have uh, very less uh, patience. So a lot of things they know how to, uh, just like counting, they know how to count. It's just that they will count and they will get excited and they will uh, start to skip the counting. So what we do is we actually play a song, which is, uh, uh, for example, the five duckling song. So when they are doing it, they are, uh, I will play the, we are, when they are throw, uh, playing the uh, catch and throw ball, I will play the song together. So they will have to, you know, follow the tempo of the song and start the counting. So these actually uh, help them to actually slow them down. Okay. And also to follow what is the song actually, uh, uh, actually counting. So you can actually try this to associate different uh, theme of song uh, at home also. Okay, so the next one will be a um, guessing game. Uh, this is an, a very nice example, guessing games such as guessing animal sound. For auditory uh, learners, we you, we can do some games in the, in the, in the class and also uh, at home also. Uh, for example, you can play some, uh, different, some uh, different sounds of animals and ask them to guess uh, uh, what animal is this. So for, this is to actually to support uh, their vocab and also their knowledge on uh, this theme. So my team now, uh, this example of uh, me sharing is uh, about farm, farm animals. You can actually share about, uh, you can actually associate anything about um, farm. So uh, this is one of the, this is one of the examples. Okay, so the next one um, will be the kinesthetic part. So for kinesthetic learners, Okay, um, they learn best by moving or by doing, uh, you can have a lot of, uh, you know, actions and physical activities included in the teaching. So how they, how they learn, they learn uh, through a move, movement, touch, explore, and create uh, in order to, for them to, you know, uh, to learn faster. So they benefit a lot from hands-on activities. For example, um, experiment. Child, uh, children like, uh, they like experiment very much, which you can do some hands-on activities. Uh, so, uh, for example, you can uh, do some um, skits and also... Um, field trips for them to you know uh, be receptive on different um, different theme of uh, learning and also they may love sports drama dance martial arts and also arts and crafts i have this uh, i had this student he likes art and craft but um he, he is very weak in his uh, uh, fine motor skill, in his cutting skill, uh, which is because he has no... Uh, one of the reasons why he's weak on his um, cutting skill is because he has no patience when he, he cuts. For example, if we give him a, 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 a set of shapes to cut, we are, maybe we can give him some... Uh, you know, um, squares and all that, the different shapes to ask him to cut on the line is very difficult. He, he, he finds it difficult to, you know, follow the line and cut on the line. Every time he needs a lot of reminder from us, he can actually cut on the line. But he needs a lot of reminder from us, uh, from, from the teacher to actually, okay, please cut in the line, look at the line and all that. But at the same time, he likes uh, arts and crafts. 
So what we do is we do a lot of arts and crafts. Uh, for example, we choose some characters that he likes. Um, some uh, he likes uh, different animals, so we can actually choose uh, animals as and as and crafts, and to practice and to actually train up his cutting skill from that. Okay, so uh, this is uh, one of the examples that I would like to share: uh, arts and crafts, and also okay for us uh, for students. For, for children who likes martial arts or taekwondo or a different uh, physical exercise, you can also, uh, you know, associate all these exercises in their learning as well. Um, for example, I, I would like to share uh, one, of the, one of the activities that we uh, likes to play, uh, what, uh, likes to conduct in the class, which is uh, sight rolling. My students likes to do sight rolling and also um, they like to, you know, pretend, uh, do some pretend play on a bear. So we, we, we do bear walk. Uh, they like to do, uh, they like to pretend um, dogs cats little animals so we do crawl in the in the in the crawling we do crawling in this in the class so uh, in our team for example we will have uh, different activities on um, uh, farms animals mathematics questions we can actually um, do some of these cards some of these uh, flashcards, actually we can scatter all around the room and ask them to, you know, uh, pretend, okay, um, pretend to be a um, monkey. Okay, they have to move like a monkey uh, to get one flashcard. And then once they get the flashcards, they will have to, you know, read out the words or if it is a mathematics question, they will have to solve the mathematics questions. Okay, uh, this is how we associate movement and uh, the learning together. So the other, uh, we can actually do it in a group. So all this, it, it actually includes uh, movement and also hearing. Uh, when teacher says, I want a bear move, um, how does a bear move? I want you to pretend a bear, be a bear. So they will do the bear walk. So this is uh, auditory. Okay. Uh, once they do the bear walk to get the flashcards, the bear walk is actually, uh, it includes kinesthetic. So once they get the flashcard, it includes the visual to help them to solve the problem. So actually what we do in the class, we actually include three of it, okay? Of course, before we include all this, we need to know which type, uh, we need to know which type uh, of learning style your child uh, is more towards which, which learning style. So if the child is more towards kinesthetic, we can uh, create some games which includes more kinesthetic and also slowly we get in auditory and also um, uh, and also visual in the activities. So this is how we associate in the class. Okay, so for kinesthetic learner, here are some examples to get some hands-on, uh, do experiments and also do some field trips. So all uh, which I have um, mentioned before, the experiment part. Okay, for example, uh, we have tried in our class, uh, we have tried doing uh, macarons. Okay, we did a baking, we call it, okay, a baking experiment, which uh, my, my students were, uh, were very excited for it because uh, one, of my, one, of the, one of my students likes uh, to bake. The other student likes uh, macaron. So uh, we were, doing some we were we were saying okay let's do a, an experiment to come up with uh, 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 to come up and bake uh, macarons 
So this was also uh, because I am not a, I, 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 <laughs> I'm not good at baking as well. So is that is actually a, a, a learning experience for me also. So both a uh, few of us teachers and students, we actually did some, uh, spent some time to did some research on how to uh, bake macarons. So in the research, okay, we include uh, doing the, uh, writing out the recipes because it's something that, that they like. Macarons is something that they like and they are excited uh, to do. So we actually ask them to do research and also try to write down the, uh, write and list down uh, what are the materials that they need to uh, prepare. And also what are the recipes, the first step, uh, what do you have to do, second step, third step, fourth step. So we actually wrote, wrote it down in the mahjong paper. So, and let them know, actually you can actually uh, let them visualize what are the steps that we are going to do. So after we do we did the research, the next the next step will be preparing the preparing the materials, the ingredients that we need. So they will have to write down the checklist, the ingredient list, and bring it back home uh, and get all the materials, all the ingredients that they need and come back to school. It, it, uh, this project actually took us um, two weeks to actually uh, finish the whole project from doing research. Um, actually, it, uh, the, the duration of this project is actually, it depends very much on uh, on the students and also on uh, the logistic as well. So for this experience of mine, we had uh, about uh, two weeks. So we actually uh, list from, from uh, we, we listed down the recipes, and the ingredients that we need. And then from uh, the next day, the next step will be uh, the hands-on activity, which they like it very much they have to they have to uh, uh, br uh, bring all the ingredients that they need and then right uh, the first one because we uh, we learn about our weighing uh, measure making measurement so they will have to you know weigh the ingredients themselves and then to measure how much water that they uh, need and all that so all these hands-on activities actually make them learn practically. So they can actually uh, do, do them uh, bake the macarons and also to, they, they were able to uh, brought it home to share with the parents as well. So this is the experience that I had before by doing all these hands-on ex experiments which uh, our students like it very much. So um, the next one will be uh, activity-based study tools like role-playing, model building. So role-playing is uh, very good, okay? Uh, it's a very effective way for them to learn as well. Uh, like what I uh, shared about the three little pigs. Actually, we, uh, we, you can actually eat you can uh, actually choose it, the stories that your child is interested. So my students of this, this is actually one of the one of the um, example that we had, three little pigs, and also we can uh, have uh, this um, a bear hunt book. So different stories, we can actually ask them to role play. Uh, role play in the in the in the class and add in the team the things that we want them to uh, we want them to learn. So the next one will be study in a small group, and also give them uh, frequent breaks. Okay, um, for our for our students, they um, some of some. Okay, it's good if our students know how to ask for breaks. 
but uh, ask for rest and breaks. But some of our students, they uh, will only show it through their behavior. So we will have to, you know, observe and we will have to uh, learn how to, you know, pay them and give them frequent breaks so that they can actually uh, go further and learn uh, uh, longer in uh, prolong their act prolong their attention span in giving them frequent breaks without breaks um, they will show you a lot of challenging behavior this is uh, a way one of the ways for them to you know to actually in a way express and to tell you uh, teacher is enough I need a break but they are able to come back with uh, a better attention a better focus after the breaks so I will talk about all this uh, later in the later part and the next one will be memory games, flashcards, all this um, study with music playing in the black background is actually uh, what you can do for kinesthetic learners. Okay, so here's a, an example that I would like to share. Um, for this one, our team will be jumbled sentences. They have to solve the jumbled sentences and to, you know, um, put the sentence into right order. So I actually um, presented auditory, visual, and also kinesthetic, how we actually associate it in our, in our learning. So for, for this one, this is a very uh, simple example for you. Okay, for this, for the first one, okay, uh, they have to, you know, put the, sen put the sentence into right order. So we can actually start it's um, very hard for them to you know I, I for them it's like a chunk of words and um, for them to for the, some of the children they cannot uh, do the they cannot visualize this these all these words and um, put them in the correct order without some physical um, aids to support them so what we can do is actually some a picture, a picture um, of a dog chasing a cat. So this will actually help them to actually inspire them to, okay, I see a dog, I see a cat. Hmm. So what, is, what does this um, sentence trying to, uh, you know, trying to ask? So we can actually give them a, a hint to actually put them into a correct order. The dog chase the dog. Okay. So the next one, uh, we talk about kinesthetic. We talk about auditory. We can actually, if you see uh, the uh, flashcards that I have, um, the one that I am, my cursor is moving. Uh, uh, all these, we can actually put, put, it, put them into a flashcards. Okay, and also we um, we can put it on the floor or make it a, uh, make a game for them to you know get uh, read get them to read first. Okay, uh, each of the flashcards it consists of different meaning. Okay, after they read the flashcards, after they read the uh, the cards, they can actually okay starting to you know. Um, starting to move the cards and arrange the cards because in the in the exercise for them uh, to see uh, the the words that they can see is actually words. Okay, when you give them uh, some flashcards, when you give them something solid, something to hold on, they can actually starting to you know uh, starting to arrange. Okay, my student started with, uh, uh, started with arranging flashcards. And within one month, he is able to, uh, I'm able to, he's able now, uh, he's able to fade out the flashcards and actually started to uh, visualize uh, without using the flashcards anymore. This is how we actually um, uh, pace them, okay? Uh, we initially 
Firstly, we give them the, the flashcards to help them. This is uh, something uh, physical and they, uh, something that uh, they can visually see and arrange. Okay. It, started, uh, it, it takes him uh, a month. It takes him some time to actually uh, transfer from the flashcards into the worksheets. Now he's able to, uh, he's able to do the worksheet, complete the worksheet without the flashcards. So this is how we transform, transform from kinesthetic flashcards or visual okay, into uh, the worksheets. So if we take off all these flashcards, uh, pictures and all that, okay, we skip this step. Imagine we skip this step and then just present and then with this uh, worksheet, jumbled sentences. It, it could be very hard for them to visualize what are these words trying to tell me. Okay, so this is uh, one of the a simple example that we does in, 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 in the class. Okay, so the next one so will be, yeah. This is okay. yes. so before we move on to the next slide. Okay. So, uh, from from what you have shared, mm -hmm. uh, for those children that struggle, it is mm -hmm. important for us to find out their learning style first. Am I correct? Yes. Correct? Yes. Because you share that there's a three different styles uh, based on your experience. There's three different styles that children learn. Okay. The first one you talk about auditory, and then the second one you talk about. Uh, uh, sorry, the first one is talk visual. about visual. Yes. Yes. Second is auditory and. And three is kinesthetic. So right. for for those parents who prepare, uh, trying to prepare the children to follow up or to catch up academically, or for teachers that are handling children that have uh, sort of uh, a bit delay in academic because of uh, transitioning back to school. So these are some of the strategies uh, that you have suggested. So the first step, uh, as you suggested, we have to identify uh, the, right. the learning style. The learning style, yes. And then from the learning style, either they, they learn through visual, they learn through what they see, or auditory, they learn through hearing, or the third one is they learn to kinesthetic, where you have a lot of movement uh, involved in the learning. Then from after identifying the learning style, then mm -hmm. only we can apply uh, different types of strategy to sort of a system. Yes, which is true. Uh, and yeah. then after we after we actually identify the learning style, mm -hmm. um, we can actually um, we can actually choose to put in different aspects, three aspects together in our in our teaching for them to you know explore in different learning styles, mm -hmm. which they don't uh, which in at the end of the day they don't only stick to one learning style okay all right uh, also uh, is there any um way we can identify the child's learning style uh yes uh there are ways for them okay it has to be through observation and also uh you can have uh, you can you can um know it through their response so um for example uh, kids who is very good in auditory, they are very sensitive with uh, music. They will show you through their through their behavior and their actions. They will start, uh, you know, start singing uh, and humming the song. So these are these are the uh, uh, these are the way how we actually uh, identify. It has to be something that they are interested with. Okay, so also we have to uh, put it, uh, we have to also include their interest when it comes to learning. Uh, yes. So uh, parents or teachers out there or tuition teachers that you work with children with uh, special needs um, or parents you would like to know more, you can, you can I, I suggest um, you can talk to the teachers and because teachers, if you send your child to physical class, they are there five days a week uh, from morning to afternoon. 
So if you talk to your to the child uh, class teacher, they will be able to help you to let you know um, in terms of learning, how would your child respond? As from teacher treating experience, um, you are able to identify, she's able to identify through how the child responds to certain questions uh, and also show interest in certain things. Uh, one of the examples she shared that is uh, when, let's say we put A, B, C, if you put it on a paper form, the child doesn't really respond. But when you play a music about A, B, C, and then the child will hum along and start uh, um, responding to A, B, C. So this is one of the indicators uh, on identifying uh, your child's learning style. And then from there, we can uh, assist them. Uh, as we all know that, you know, um, uh, this is one way to help the child or assist the child to transition back to physical class or to help bridging the gap when doing, uh, when doing an online class. Uh, because um, the traditional way of teaching is face-to-face, -face, long hours. But when it comes to, uh, due to the pandemic, um, the child is no longer uh, having, uh, uh, they have a choice actually to go back or to do uh, distant learning, which is totally a whole new level for the child. Okay, so for for you to help with the child, um, uh, it, it's it, we, we can start with identifying and if you're not sure, uh, please do talk to the class teacher about your child's learning style and then we can help them to improve or closing the gap. Okay, and because what we uh, what we want is um, for the child not to be left out. Uh, it's, 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 in particular, we're talking about children with special needs. They have delays in certain areas. So academic is quite complex. Okay, it's not about uh, it, it could, includes uh, different types of aspects like what teacher treating shared also. Um, when it comes to learning at school, you have different types. You have uh, uh, learn, uh, learning to visual, seeing, listening. So it's just that we are we are putting more effort in uh, helping the child to uh, further or to uh, lessen the struggle they have during online class or physical class. Okay, thank you, Peter Chuting. Yep, thank you. Okay, so uh, let's continue. Um, we mentioned about building the, on the strengths, okay, which is yeah, uh, different learning styles. So the next round, uh, the next um, point that I would like to point out would, would be that learning space. Okay, it is very important um, to identify a suitable learning space for our, ch uh, for our child. Uh, even though at home and also in the classroom, it has to uh, the first the, the first condition, the first uh, thing that we need to consider is the light. Okay, the lightning in the study area in the learning space, which uh, we have to allow some natural light in the classroom whenever it's possible, but not to have a lot of sunlight that glare. Uh, and you know it will it may distract uh, our students okay this is the first the first criteria in the learning space which is the uh, light okay and the next one will be the working area the working desk that uh, our children usually do writing and do their, uh, their, their work so it has to be simple okay and not much distractions Okay, uh, what do I mean uh, on uh, not much distractions? For example, okay, when uh, they are doing their work on desk, okay, um, it has to be, uh, uh, the desk has to be clean, okay, and neat, okay, they only need the stationaries that they need on the working desk pencil case, and the working uh, sheets that they are uh, working on, okay? If they are working on arts and crafts, okay? Same, uh, uh, we, can actually, we can actually list down, okay? The material that we need, 
okay, for the for the activity and ask them to take them out. Those uh, stationaries that are not related, like other books or other stationaries like uh, bottles and all that, you can actually put that put it uh, um, in another, you know, uh, put it, uh, you can prepare a shelf for them to put uh, her, uh, their bottles in the shelf or uh, the, the uh, stationaries which is not related to that activity, you may ask them to put it in their drawer or also put it in their bag. Okay, this applies in um, at home as well. So at home, you can actually, if you are doing some um, physical activity, okay, physical activity, um, list down the materials that you need, take it out. The no, non-related materials, keep it. Same goes to the working area. Okay, if you're doing the, uh, doing the worksheets, what are the things that you need? Those, not, uh, those stationary that you don't need it, keep it. Okay, so the next round will be some group space. Okay, group space is a space where they can come together and work on various activities. For example, those activities that don't need them to write or don't need the working table, you can actually create a boundary. Okay, prepare a rug for them to, or a mat for them to sit on, on the mat and to work on. Uh, the activities like singing, um, um, some physical activities, or if you are doing some puzzle activities, you can use the mat, the space, the group space together, all children together, okay, and um, do the activity on the, in the space, okay. Light. The first one is the, the, the condition has to be uh, the light. You have, to, you have to consider the lightning, the working area, the group space. And the next one will be the um, play corner or the reward corner, which is a space where they are able to enjoy the toys, their reward for behaving well. Okay. Um, we, I will talk about, I will further elaborate about um, well, uh, behaving well in my uh, in my next few slides. Okay, um, we can we actually have this uh, token system. Okay, that I will talk about in in the uh, that I do with my students in the class. Okay, whereby they uh, collect the their tokens that we need, and during the during the. Uh, break time or during their reward time, they can actually uh, choose what they want to play in the play corner. Okay, so the next one, which is very important, you will need to have a very clear boundary in for different spaces. Okay, this is to create uh, to avoid any uh, confusion in them. For example, working area. So working area is mainly for uh, work only. If you are going to play on you, 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 you will not, we don't allow them to play on the working area. So when it, when it comes to play or reward, where they feel free to, you know, uh, start their game, okay, they have a designated corner for them. All these boundaries, it has to be, uh, uh, we have to set a clear, very clear boundary, okay? And also to keep your classroom organized, okay? To minimize all those, all those distractions that, are, uh, that is possible, okay? That will distract them, uh, distract their learning. So, for example, I have this um, students where he, will, he likes to stuff everything under the drawer, Meaning when we want him to find something, find some uh, notes or some worksheets in the file, which is which we want him to, uh, we, we usually will ask him to uh, keep it in the drawer. When we need, we need the worksheets, it's hard for him to find because he has this, ha he has this habit to actually stuff everything in his drawer. So what we 
work with them is to actually keep his working space organized. We actually uh, do. Uh, we actually make make a list. Okay, what do you need? Okay, what are the things that you need to put in your drawer? A list. So when it's uh, to help him to organize, he has to, uh, he has to do, he has to refer to the list, whatever which is not in the list, he has to keep, keep it uh, in his bag or keep it in the designated area. So uh, these are the conditions that we have to consider when we prepare the learning space for that. Okay, so the next one, uh, after building on the strength, the next one will be the, uh, the last one, learning space. And the next one will be our expectations to manage teachers' expectations, parents' expectations, and also, most importantly, our child's expectation. We have to uh, meet and communicate uh, have a very clear instructions on um, the rules. Okay, so class, which which means class rules is always very important because with these class rules is actually uh, is actually helping them to actually control and regulate themselves. What is teacher expecting us to do? What is mommy or daddy expecting me? to do okay when it's a guide for them when they are doing something or uh, they they have um, such a behavior okay they will need to refer to the rules to the class rules am i doing it correctly so if the things the behavior that they are doing okay doesn't fit in the class rules so they will need to control themselves not to do it. So it is, it is very important for us to list it down, okay, and put it up uh, to, you know, let them, uh, to let them see, let them refer or refer to the classrooms all the time. So of course, uh, all these instructions, all these classrooms, it has to be a very simple instruction. We have to keep it simple, okay? And also bear in mind with all these expectations that we expect them to do or um, um, in setting all these goals, okay? We have to go through a lot of repetition and also practices to make them, to imprint it uh, in them and to let them adapt to the instructions, our expectations, and to uh, also to um, consistently use it on them. So, which is, okay, we can try to break down tasks into uh, small and manageable steps, which, uh, for example, in one step, you cannot have, uh, um, you cannot have two complicated instructions. For example, the first step, okay, um, is um, to, for you to, for example, is for you to prepare your um, prepare your working table, okay, your working space. So how do we break down the task into small and manageable steps? For example, we prepare a checklist for them. What are the things that we need in our working table? The things that we don't mention in the in the list, okay, we don't we, we have to keep it. So this is to break break it into small steps for them to um, for them to you know refer. And also the next one will be setting up time limit for each learning slots. Okay, teachers and also parents, we have to think about how long they can stay focused. Okay, for example, before we work on um, we work on something, an activity. Okay, we know that our we know our children best. We know our child best. We, uh, we know our my. For example, I know my students 
attention span is about 10 minutes. Okay. I will set a time limit. Okay. Within that 10, limit, 10 minutes, okay, he has to finish up to uh, how many questions? For example, five questions. I need to finish. I need him to finish uh, five, five questions in 10 minutes. So he, we can actually set a timer, okay, and pace him, okay, and tell him, okay, teacher will come back in 10 minutes. So in this 10 minutes, you will need to finish this much of this much of questions. Okay. Uh, they will be they will be uh, students who will start uh, getting your attention teacher I do not know how to do it can you please help and all that okay um, for these 10 minutes okay it depends on the, the child's capability for uh, some ch for ch child who still needs our uh, prompting and also guidance you can actually uh, give some guidance within the 10 minutes for students uh, whom you are working to pay off those guidance you want him to work independently you can also use it's so it's very good for you to set a time limit for him to work independently within this stipulated time and teacher will only come back and teacher will only guide you and start guiding you after 10 minutes so in this we are actually setting an expectation and we are actually communicating okay teachers expect, expecting you to do this questions okay on your own without teachers help okay in uh, let's say 10 minutes okay so this is to actually um let them know our expectation and they will actually start to work towards the expectation. And of course, uh, if you uh, just started it, uh, you, will need to, you will need to give some patience. Um, your students or child, the child uh, will be keep asking you because it, it, uh, they need time to work out the expectation. They will start asking, uh, getting uh, attention from you and all that. But for them to know your expectation, you will need to insist in this 10 minutes, uh, what is my expectation? Tell them and then insist to you only come back and guide them after that 10 minutes. Okay, so uh, setting time, time limits and also the next one will be to provide uh, opportunities to take a break. So take a break as in you can um, choose the activities that uh, they are comfortable with, okay? So it has to be, uh, it has to be based on the, ch the, ch the child's interest. For example, if the child likes story, okay? We can read a story for, uh, during the break and then only you come back to the to the activities okay so uh, play a short game for example okay um what i do i say is this is sharing uh, what i do in my class i am preparing one of my students okay uh, to actually finish two uh, two worksheets two different subjects okay in um, let's say uh, one and a half hour, okay, in one and a half hour. So his attention span is about 20 minutes. So what I do is to actually uh, pace him, okay, 20 minutes for one subject. And after the first subject, I will uh, put in some games, um, some because he's uh, very into uh, kinesthetic learning style. So I will start giving him some um, movement games, a song, dancing, or even some, um, some uh, side rolling, jumping game in the middle. Okay. 
and it takes about 10 minutes of time. So after this break, okay, I will work on the next subject. I will start working on the next subject, which is uh, maybe mathematics. Okay. These, uh, we call it a transitional, transitional activity. Okay. This break is very important for them to tran transit from the first subject to the next subject. Without the break, uh, he basically can, uh, he will face difficulty um, in focusing and he will start expressing uh, his, how he feels through his behavior. So it is very important for, um, uh, for teachers or for parents when they set their uh, learning program or when they set their schedule, the child's schedule, please, you have to, you have to put this as a remark. Give uh, ample of break time for them to uh, do some transitional activity before going into the next topic. Okay. And the last one in this uh, expectations will be celebrating success. Okay, and also to make sure they understand consequences, which is uh, for, um, for an example, the token system. So what does the token system mean? So the token system, it is, uh, hang on, yeah, let me go to the next page. Okay, uh, this is, uh, some uh, uh, an example about how we actually con uh, how we actually uh, do this token system at home or also in the class uh, for a student. So you have to set a target, okay, a a, a reinforcer for them. So which is the the reinforcer, which is something that they like, something that they are interested. For example, um, my students, he likes some, he, he, he likes uh, movement game. He likes games. Okay. All right. So um, I will set before each game, uh, before each activities, I usually will set uh, a reinforcer for him. For example, he likes, um, a, 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 he likes gym ball. So we will do a gym ball game um, once he is able to uh, finish, uh, collect the tokens. So uh, how do you collect all these tokens? Okay, we can actually put in stars and also put in um, smiley face. All this, uh, I will put, I will uh, remember the class rules that I mentioned before. Okay, the class rules, for example, he has to listen, he has to follow instruction, he has to, um, for now, he has to finish his work by, uh, on his own and all that. All these criteria, all these expectations that I want, I, I, I expect him to have, okay, all these are, uh, are the things that he can actually do to collect the token. For example, that if uh, the day he is able to listen very well or follow instruction very well, he is able to get uh, a smiley face for listen for listening, a smiley face for following instructions. So there you go. He has two um, smiley face. Okay, uh, we will have to set this token economy uh, token system. Um, right before we started uh, right before uh, we start the activities okay right or, or right before we start the day so what are you working for for example i need to have uh, four tokens okay for the gym ball game so he has to um, refer to the class rules and do the expected behavior that i that teacher expect him to do to behave in order for him to create uh, to to collect the tokens so if he is able to collect the four tokens he's able to get 
the reinforcer that we uh, fix for him. Okay, so for this uh, for this example, you will have to you will have two, four, six, eight. Uh, this is too much. Okay, so um, maybe we can start small for uh, four, and then slowly we expand to six when he's able to when when four tokens he's able to there's no issue for him to get four tokens every day we can actually uh, increase the difficulty into six tokens and slowly to eight to ten to twelve so this is how we works on a uh, token economy if he doesn't uh, uh, um, collect enough token for the day he has to face the consequence uh, the consequences which is he will not get the reinforcer on the day that uh, on the day that he uh, failed to collect the token so in this token economy we get we uh, he, he gets to learn the consequence if i'm working for this so if i would i i would like to achieve this I will need to do the expected behavior. Okay, I will need to behave, uh, uh, the expected behavior, behave well in the class and get the token to achieve this. If I don't achieve this, the consequences is I will not get the reinforcer on that day. Okay, so this is how we uh, work on the token economy system. Okay. So the next one will be, uh, okay, after the uh, expectations, okay, the next one will be the daily routine, okay? The daily routine is a structure, okay? All our students need a structure, okay? When you go to school, you have your timetable, okay? The timetable that uh, they need to know, okay, uh, what subject are you having, Okay, uh, so that they will have time, they will, they will know what to prepare for each subject. Okay, same goes to children with special needs. We need a routine or a timetable, a, a, a fixed schedule, a predictable schedule, okay, for them so that they are clear with what they, uh, what they are going to do. Okay, in the classroom, okay, we have to to have this expectation clearly posted, okay, um, paste it in the classroom everywhere, uh, anywhere, any spot which uh, is um, easy access, okay, they, are, they can easily um, visualize, easily see in the classroom and let them refer to it all the time. It has to be a, it has to be a, a, a nice spot for them to okay, I know uh, this. Uh, this is next. What am I going to do? Uh, okay, after this activity, uh, the next activity. What are they? Uh, what um, they will be expecting? Uh, the activities. Okay, step by steps. Same goes to the activities at home. You will have to create this routine. For example, every uh, every day you have to wake up at. Um, for example. Eight o'clock. After you wake up, what do you do? You brush your teeth. You brush your teeth. The next one, you will get your uh, breakfast. After you get your breakfast, what will you do? Okay, all these, put it, um, write it down. Okay, it's easier for them to visualize if you put it, if you write it clearly and paste it um, in a, on the wall. Uh, uh, in the classroom and also at home, okay? So this is the predictable schedule that we need. And also, okay, if the daily schedule is going to change, please, please preempt them in at once to let them know, okay, tomorrow, um, this particular time, okay, uh, the other teacher will come in um, and replace me. So you have to you have to preempt preempt them, tell them in at once. Okay, do not do last minute changes and uh, suddenly okay another teacher comes in 
or suddenly you will slot in another activities and a brand new activities that um, your child have never um, experienced before. Okay, this will disrupt their routine and will actually disrupt their um, attention as well. So the next one will be, be will also be uh, the be the organization part. You will have some checklists, okay, on the daily routine for them to check, okay, uh, so that we can train for the independency. So what do you mean by independency? Okay, if you have a, a, a predictable schedule, okay, initially we uh, they need our uh, they need our guidance to go through our, the schedule. Okay, if they have this predictable predictable schedule, we can actually move towards um, 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 for them to do things on their own. They will need to know. Uh, okay, for example, there's a morning routine that our student comes in. What do they have to do? The first, the first thing that they have to do is to wish uh, to greet all the teachers. Uh, good morning. Okay, after greeting all the teachers, the next, the next round, the next, the next thing that they have to do is to um, um, clear their, if, is to prepare their working, their working space. The next thing that they need to do is to prepare themselves and wait for the teacher to uh, enter the class. So all these, okay, all this schedule and all this routine, after repetition, we can actually, if they um, expect all this routine to be the same every morning, daily, we can actually train them to, sooner, sooner we can actually train them to uh, do it on their own without any guidance, without any prompting from teacher. This is what we mean by independency. Okay. So um, the next the next one, okay, which is the mo most important thing, uh, the calming relaxation techniques. So after all, uh, after all the, after all the things that we go through, okay, to build on the strength, okay, the next one will be the learning space, okay the expectations and also the routine. The last one that we need to talk about that we need to consider is the relaxation and calming techniques. They are, there will be a lot of uh, challenging behavior um, that they can be, they can, uh, if you um, uh, give them a new activities, okay, uh, there are a possibility, there's a possibility for them to get too excited or uh, they will get uh, distracted. Okay, they will, if there's um, too, too much for them for the day, okay, they will get, uh, they will having, they will be having difficulty to, to, you know, calm themselves. All these relaxation techniques actually do help them to calm down before the end of the day or even um, um, before the end of the day in the middle of each activities you can we can actually practice all this to make sure that they calm themselves down and prepare themselves uh, for the next activity so there are a few things that i would like to point out okay the first relaxation techniques we can try is uh, true breathing, okay? Uh, the five finger breathing is uh, whereby you have to breathe in and out. I will talk about it uh, later for the, I will uh, show you the example of the five finger breathing later, okay? The next one will be uh, music, okay? You can, uh, you can prepare a playlist of their favorite song, okay? If they are too stressed out, um, you can actually uh, play it 
and uh, suggest okay uh, the next the next activity we can uh, uh, we get to choose our favorite song to actually give them a chance for a break and also to calm down themselves and the next one uh, movement you can uh, do all sorts of dancing uh, walking bike uh, biking okay if uh, you have a bike at home okay or um, in the in the school you can ask them to you know give them some time to actually uh, do all these physical activities you will need to have a list of calm down calm down activities for them okay uh, it is good to have a dedicated personal space for them to you know combat with the effect of stress Okay, for example, if they have a favorite book, you can prepare the favorite book or even favorite toy, soft toys, which can help them to calm down in a personal space. That is why we have our play area, play corner in our classroom. Okay, at home, you can actually customize an area, okay, create an area that... Uh, includes all this in that area for them to have this personal space okay uh, the last one will be the sensory activities which is um, to include those activities like squeezing, squeezing stress balls or also um, gym ball okay or glitter jars or also um, you can create a box hmm, I don't have it uh, you can create a box which is filled with um, different beads that they can touch, which can, can also provide a calming effect for the kids. Okay, so I'll go back to uh, the breathing. Okay, we can talk about the five finger breathing. Okay, you can actually ask uh, your child to do this breathing visually. Okay, that they can actually breathe in through their nose. And slowly breathe out through the mouth and breathe in again, breathe out, in, out, in, out, in, out again for them to calm down. It, it actually, when you complete this five finger breathing, it gives them time for them to breathe and also for them to, you know, trans, transfer their attention, okay, to divert their attention to the breathing. It actually does help them to calm down. Okay, so this is uh, the five finger breathing. Okay, so uh, these are a few examples that I would like to share about on a checklist. Okay, I mentioned about um, uh, breaking, breaking um, tasks into a smaller task, into manageable steps. You can actually create a checklist for them, okay, and write in your expectations and ask them to take if they uh, if they go through and did the uh, expected expected behavior, for example, um, let's go back to the jumbled question, uh, the jumbled the jumbled sentences worksheet that I've showed you uh, just now. Uh, hang on, yeah, let me go back. Okay, for this. Okay, so. For example, my students, he has this tendency to rush everything, okay? He will skip writing the name, write it, skip writing the date, and then he will start doing, okay? Uh, and he will start writing, all right? So sometimes, right before we actually give him the instructions, or right before we actually finish our instruction, uh, this student of mine has actually started to do his work. So with the use of the checklist, okay, with the use of the task checklist, 
it can actually, you can actually write it down. Okay, for this jumble sentences, for this activity, okay, what are the things that you need to complete? The first one, name. You have to write the name on the worksheet. The second one, you have to write the date. Okay, write it here, date of the worksheet. Okay, and number three, you can actually, okay, this is, this is a step. You can actually read. Okay, read. And number four, because he's now still under my guidance to uh, do this uh, jumble sentences, okay, he has to listen. Okay, and number five, after doing all these four steps, the last step will be writing on the checklist, write the answer on the checklist. So number one, okay, will be, hang on, let me show you the, okay, so number one will be the name, number two, date, number three, he has to read, number four, he has to listen, and number five, he has to write the answer. So he has to go through all this. The first step, okay, if he's done, then he has to check. Okay, number two, date. If he's done with the date, done writing in the date, then check. Number three, if he's done uh, reading, check. So he will not skip any of these steps when he's doing the ex, uh, to when he's doing the worksheets, this checklist applies to all his check, uh, all his worksheet as well. For example, he when he if he's doing a mathematics worksheet, the first one he has to write the name, the second one he has to write the date, and the third one he has to read the instruction. This apply this checklist applies to all his um, worksheets okay this actually helps a lot to actually remind him what to do okay and teacher does not have to you know uh, stand beside him and tell him okay the first step what do you what do you need to do the second step what do you need to do he he can just refer to the checklist what we expect him to do and slowly we work towards the independency, as I mentioned uh, in my previous slides. Okay, so this is the uh, one of the example on a checklist, which you can create it uh, when you uh, guide your child. Okay, and also this one, next one, the material list that I uh, mentioned just now. For example, okay, this this uh, um, I I've mentioned just now to uh, the material list for the working space, okay? This is actually a, a, a material list for, uh, uh, for the backpack, okay? You can actually, you know, write the subject. Okay, for example, mathematics. This mathematics subject, what are the items that um, the, ch the child needs? List it down. So every time when it's mathematics um, subject, he will have to tick. These are the things that he will need to prepare for the class. The next subject, same goes to the items. You have to list it down and he knows what to prepare. He knows what are the materials to prepare without prompting from teacher. Of course, before we work towards independency, we will have to guide him through the materials, uh, through all the lists first. So this is another example of the material list. Okay. All right. And we mentioned about expectation also, the class rules. So there are students who um, cannot visualize, okay, uh, what are the expectations rules if we, uh, if we write it, um, um, write it on the board or write it, we can actually put it in visual form. So um, sitting at a sitting desk, what are the things that teacher expect you to do? 
So the first one, feet on floor, eyes looking, ears listening, and all that. So these are the checklists that they will need to do when it's when you are sitting on at the desk. These are the things to do. Okay. For example, circle time, these are the things to do. Find spot, sit nicely, quiet hand, ears, ears listening, and ready for circle time. Okay. Arriving. The morning routine. Okay, you can you can you can have this. Okay, for 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 this one because it doesn't apply to our our uh, to our culture. We don't have uh, we 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 can actually take this off. Okay, we can actually. Uh, this is just an example for you to you know uh, for you to refer to. What are the things that you can uh, write it down? You can list it down visually for them to refer. Okay, so the five finger breathing. Okay, that ends my presentation for today. So Charlie, are you there? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Treating, for sharing. So yeah, as we have mentioned, um, for those who have questions, feel free. Uh, to post it in the comments, um, like what teacher treating has mentioned, it's very important for us uh, to identify uh, the children's uh, learning style before we move on to uh, talking about uh, how we can help the child. So teacher treating has gone through all. So for those who are would like to review uh, the video, you can feel free to check it out on our website. Uh, it's available. Uh, you can see the replay, uh, what she has been uh, shared uh, in this, uh, this, uh, this uh, workshop. So after identifying the, the learning style, then only we apply strategy. Okay, so most of the time, we talk about uh, how we can teach uh, the children, especially we're talking about children with special needs. But at the same time, like what teacher treating also has uh, uh, pin out that we have to make sure the setting is conducive or it's comfortable for the child to do learning. Okay, if it's in the class, uh, then we have not much control over. But if you are a teacher, if you realize that your children, especially those with special needs, have difficulty focusing, first we want to check if the setting is. Uh, uh, of uh, it's uh, conducive with the child. If it's in a home setting, uh, parents you can also do that because, like what teacher treating shared based on her ex experience, uh, it can be uh, the lights. Uh, child can be easy, easily distracted. Same goes with our uh, us adults. Okay, when we work from home, we try to be in a quiet place while we're working from home. We don't want to have uh, maybe the clock ticking behind us. Uh, the TV is on. Uh, at the living room, uh, someone walking here and there, back and forth, behind you or in front of you, then you get distracted. So as an adult, uh, we do get distracted by this kind of uh, uh, sound or light. You know, sometimes uh, while I sitting near the window and the sun started to glare, uh, especially those doing online, and then it, it's very hard for us to focus on the screen because of the glaring. So we talk about learning style, we talk about strategies, but we also have to take into account uh, the surrounding uh, of the child. Okay, uh, especially special needs, especially special needs and those who have sensory difficulties. Because when we talk about uh, academic learning, towards academic learning, there's a lot of things underneath. We can check out the pyramid of learning. Okay, sensory is one of the biggest component in uh, uh, when we talk about uh, learning. So if one of the senses are distracted, then it's very difficult for the child to retain uh, attention. Yes, attention. Okay, it's very hard for them to maintain. Okay, so let's say um, we already take into account the surrounding, the noise, or maybe in a big classroom uh, of 20 students, there's nothing much we can do about the window. We can put a... Uh, uh, um Curtain, line, uh, blind curtain, yeah. curtain, but sometimes the lights, the lights of the classroom can be too bright. There's nothing we can do about it. Uh, then uh, we can 
uh, work around by giving a break, like what teacher treating said. Maybe uh, some of the children, they can finish a uh, given task in one shot. Let's say 10 mathematics questions. The, some of the, of the child can finish like, oh, one sitting on the table can finish all 10 questions, but some of them cannot. Okay, same goes to children with special needs. Some of them they can, some of them cannot. Then we have to break down um, uh, the, the work, uh, putting it to smaller tasks and then to build uh, the child ability uh, to increase the, the, the time spent uh, on the activity. Maybe two questions, the child start walking around, going around. Okay, some child, uh, uh, if you ex experience working with children with special needs, you can see that sometimes they start uh, looking around, they start humming, they start making noise, they start looking back and forth, they start uh, standing up, walking around. Okay, so this is one of the signs that maybe uh, they have reached uh, their own capacity. Okay, they have to have a break because sometimes children with special needs, they are unable to express. Uh, yes, correct, to express. Yeah. So we have to take into consideration uh, about uh, this kind of situation. Okay, given that the settings, we already, we know the learning style, we change the setting, but still uh, the child somewhat having difficulty. Okay, so if it's in a bigger classroom, we might want to change the strategy, break down the exercise for the child. Okay, if you're working with the child at home, then you might want to give a, a task. Okay, teacher treating shared a lot about the checklist. Okay, you can put like, uh, and then a reward system. Okay, a reward system to uh, a token, okay, to increase the motivation. Sometimes uh, when we talk about children with special needs, they do not understand uh, why they have to go through this on a daily basis. Okay, even you ask a neurotypical child or child without uh, special needs, they also don't understand why I have to go to school every day, you know, why I have to do online class every day. Okay, and they, their motivation is quite low. Okay, they are not like very motivated uh, to do homework. So uh, in order for us to build that motivation, we uh, require external help. Internally, their own self, when you ask them, they don't feel like doing it. But when we pair with external motivation, uh, to external uh, assistance to help to build the motivation, uh, somewhat the child will get uh, used to it. There's a lot of uh, other um, other strategies, teacher treating the checklist to break down um, tasks as a task. Yeah. And then some use timer. Uh, within this time, you have to finish this. And then all of this, if they can achieve, uh, we further reward them. Okay. It can be quite hard in a school setting when you have more than 20, 30 students. Uh, but you can also, this is where we talk about expectation. Okay. When you talk about motivation, we also have to. Uh, 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 take into consideration about the child expectation. Like I mentioned just now, they, most of them don't understand why they have to go through this. Okay. We understand. We want the child to have better education or we want them to learn academically, but the child will not. Okay, so they like, uh, and this way we have to put our expectation or their expectation, both expectations into consideration. Okay, if parents' expectation is very high, uh, then the, the child is very low, then you cannot meet in the middle. Uh, this way, both parents and teachers got frustrated or the child got frustrated. You know, I give you 10 questions, why you cannot finish? Huh? It takes you four hours, you can only do two. And then from the child point of view, it's like, this question is so hard. I can only, you know, I take so much time, I'm struggling. Uh, how, how do I do this? Okay, so this is where expectations have to be met. Okay. And then the next one is uh, the last part, okay, where teacher treating shared. The calming. Yes, uh, this is to help the child during the break time. Uh, because uh, here in teacher treating class, uh, we, we don't play inside the class. Class is for learning. Okay, but sometimes if you have child uh, working from home, you might have limited space. So the child might be eating where they learn, the child might be playing where they learn, okay? So sometimes they, when you transition from learning to break, taking a break and then back to learning, they don't understand this is the place where I play, why I need to go back to classroom online, 
okay, or maybe in the classroom setting, you know, because now pandemic, we cannot put the child, you know, okay, now it's uh, recess time, you can go out, no, we no longer have that. So the child doesn't understand, this is the place where I sit and also I play. But why after play, I have to go back to work. So this is the, the, the thing that we help them to transition. Sometimes they need longer time to regulate during the break time. So one of the techniques that teacher treating use in the class is to relaxation. Okay, breathe in, breathe out. Uh, because when we talk about children with special needs, um, they do have a tendency to take longer time to regulate. Okay, they sometimes uh, make a lot of fuss uh, verbally, but also through behavior. Okay, uh, if you work, uh, if your child is working at home, uh, I mean study from home. Uh, learn from home you can see distant learning you can see a lot of this behavior like you know we are inside a very uh even though the the class is i mean the room that set up is quite conducive but because of limited space they have no way to go uh, like monday to friday in this confined area okay even in at school you are confined because of the covid you can't go out and start mingle with other people you have to stay in your seat eat in your seat Okay, and then you can walk around within uh, the set boundaries by the teacher. So all this uh, will pen up the emotion of the child because they have difficulties, like uh, especially those who experienced be school before COVID. Uh, like last time, we said time I go out, run, 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 run around the padang at the field. But nowadays I cannot do that. So where do I go? I'm I'm full of energy, okay, and I cannot concentrate because I I I, I want to play. So this is a technique where uh, teacher treating shares uh, that uh, we can try to apply uh, to to uh, for students, okay. And in particularly, we're talking about children with special needs uh, because they are the one that definitely need more help, uh, need more time. When we talk about uh, academic learning. So even though some of the child they are quite high functioning, but sometimes they still struggle. So when they struggle, it doesn't mean it's end of the world. It's just that they require external assistance. Okay. So parents, if you're working with your child and you need help, please talk to the teachers. Okay. And ask about how they can, how do they teach the child? Like some we have parents here, uh, teacher treating. Why you can teach my child? Why I cannot teach my own child? So this is where we interact with the parents. Okay. This is what we do in the class. Uh, you might want to bring uh, some of this strategy at home and start establishing it. Okay, because of all the things that have shared, teacher treating did mention that uh, children need practices. Okay, it's like doing mathematics. You learn the formula, you need to practice in a constant uh, basis. If you don't practice, sooner or later you forgot about it. And then that's where you have to restart again. Okay, so you can see this uh, not even not not even in children with special needs. Um, end of the year holiday, okay, November, uh, December to January. Uh, that one month holiday, when January back to school, you can see a lot of children like, ah, oh, I have to go back to school. Parents start panicking. Why is my child not following teacher's instructions? Why? Because um, even though it's holiday, sometimes. Uh, you can occasionally put a practice into the child to maintain um, uh, the readiness to go back to school. Okay, the structure is very important. So you have all this, but you stop for a month, no practice. You cannot expect the same performance as previous during the same training. Okay, definitely uh, there will be delay, regardless the child has special needs or not. Even adults, you know, let's say I take a break uh, from uh from uh my work okay after one month uh as an adult i too need some time to transition back to work i cannot jump straight back in and full for 100 percent on my performance uh it's almost impossible because uh, our body uh take a break and i've not been practicing for one month so i definitely need some adjustment so this adjustment is what teacher treating has mentioned just now. Okay, class readiness. Uh, this is where we can help the child to get back on their foot, but it requires a lot of training. So yeah. So this. Uh, thank you for attending uh, on our workshop today. Thank you, teacher.
Secretary team. And all to those that join us today, if you have any question that you didn't get to ask now, uh, because we are already at the end of the workshop, feel free to uh, 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 messenger us or PM us or inbox or email us uh, if you have any question. Okay, thank you everyone for joining. Thank you, teacher treating. Thank you. Uh, stay thank safe you so uh, and have a good weekend. Bye bye. Bye bye.